Hello, uh, this video comes to you from Meg S, who wants to know how to write about poetry techniques. Is there a chance you could do a general poem, devices, techniques, revision video? Currently, I'm quite clueless, and I will also be taking the WJEC English Lit exam. Well, this will apply whatever exam you're doing, because obviously poetry devices come up in any poem exam. I seem to be able to identify techniques. Well, actually, that's the main battle. That's the difficult bit. Um, and so what I'm going to teach Meg is something easy. But I think Meg's question does reveal how English teachers are teaching poetry. And they do it by getting you uh, to spot loads of techniques. Uh, have you written about the simile, the metaphor, the alliteration, the assonance? Um, the enjambment, the stanza, the verse, how many syllables there are per line, is it iambic pentameter, is it trochaic meter, all these things. Um, now you can learn about all of those things, but actually they don't get you any marks on their own. And Meg realises this, she says, I'm unable to infer meaning and purpose from them which is what you need to get the mark. So spot on, Meg, that's exactly what you need to get to get the marks. Um, she's added in some other techniques, like a conversational tone or a direct address, where the writer talks to you, the reader, and places you in the poem. Uh, it would also be helpful to find a video with all the techniques uh, and what they use for generally. Well, this actually doesn't happen. Poets never think like that. They don't think, oh, right, I'm going to put some alliteration in here because alliteration is generally used for X or Y. I'm going to put a simile in here because it's generally used for uh, Z or A. Uh, poets don't think that way. So if that's the case, what are we to do? Well, I've written here, you're thinking about the techniques in the wrong way, Meg. Each technique will be used in a different way according to the poem. Consequently, ask yourself what the poet wants you to think or feel. And this is a much better way to think about the poem. You know, this poet has spent hours writing and rewriting this poem to make you feel and think stuff. And when you've worked that out, that's why the simile's there, or that's why the metaphor's there, or that's why the personification or the enjambment, etc. That's why it's there. So this will tell you how to explain the technique by inferring meaning. For example, the direct address could be to encourage us to empathise with the character or with the poet. Or it could be to call us to action. It could be a protest of some sort. Or it could be to accuse us, um, to tell us we're not doing something that we should be doing. Or to shock us, to provoke us to see life in a different way. Or it could be to help us experience universal experience like love or grief or jealousy. And I could have gone on and on and on. You can see that thinking about these things in isolation won't help you. What you've actually got to do is think about the poet in the poem. So asking yourself that simple question, what does the writer want me to think or feel here, is a much simpler way of going about it. So here's an example from an essay that you might have seen in some of my other videos. Uh, we're going to look at this paragraph, and he's, it's uh, Blake's poem, London, that I'm looking at. Blake has the opposite view of society. He seeks out injustice and hypocrisy in order to force those in authority to think again. He notes instead that the soldier's sigh runs in, runs in blood down palace walls. So I'm in the exam, I've recognised that that is a metaphor. Um, this metaphor transposes the blood on the battlefield and attaches it to the palace. So now I'm asking myself, well, why has the author, why has the poet done this? What does Blake want me to think or feel? The palace symbolises not just the king or queen, but the whole work, ruling class and government who sent soldiers to, to kill or die. So... I'm inferring here that Blake is protesting about that. Uh, Blake suggests that the soldiers realise much of what they do is wrong or misguided, which is why they sigh. So here, 
he's being empathetic, isn't it? And he's asking me to empathise. Um, what's his point of view? Well, this could also be ironic, ironic, as though this is the hapless soldier's last breath, their life has been sacrificed not to defend a country, but only the king's walls. The ordinary soldier dies simply to keep rulers in power. And that's Blake's point. So I hope you can see how I've spotted that it's a metaphor. I get no marks for that. But all this is explaining why Blake has used that particular metaphor. And that's where the A star is. So there you go. That's how to do it. If you'd like more videos, don't forget to subscribe.